Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Tonight we continue with the Abbeville 1940 pint size campaign. Battle 3, 4th Cameron's attack at Hoochinville. <laughs> This battle will be the third and final battle on June 4th and the last chance for the 51st Highland Division to reduce the German bridgehead before they begin fall rot. Before I begin the briefing for tonight's game I'll quickly recap what's happened up to this point in the campaign. So there has been two, two battles previous to this both on June 4th. First one was Table B and that was Mensel Trois Fatis. And that one we saw Lieutenant Willie Burns and his platoon steamroller the Germans and get a victory. The last battle we played was Table A. That was the Fritz Gordon's attack on the Grand Bois. In that one, Steve took command of the Germans and he stuffed the uh, 51st Highland Division cold and they got nowhere. So uh, the British have won one and the Germans have won one so far. And if you recall, every battle that the British win on the first day, June 4th, adds one to the turn count for the Germans when June 5th begins and the operation proper starts. So if I can win tonight's game, I can add yet another turn and make it even harder for the Germans to achieve their objectives once fall rot begins. Tonight's game is Table C, 4th Cameron's attack at Hoochinville. And if I mispronounced, I apologize. Uh, this battle will be using the Swift to Support mission from the 1940 handbook and we'll see the British attacking the Germans. So in this in this mission the attackers, the objective is to capture all of the jump off points uh, the enemy jump off points. So the British will be starting on this edge the, Brit the Germans will be starting on that side so at the beginning of the game I will roll to see where my four patrol markers are placed. They will either be all placed here or all placed here and that's randomly rolled. The Germans will place four patrol markers all the way up to the halfway point on the board. We're both going to be getting 14 support points. However, the Germans cannot deploy any of their support points until turn two. Terrain wise, it's the same exact terrain that uh, we've had and that we will have, but I will go over it again. So the wheat fields are waist high and they are soft cover if stationary. These are woods, those are woods, four inch visibility in. The hedges are thin and craggly and they do not block line of sight but they do uh, provide soft cover. Uh, so we got some hedges here as well. The buildings are hard cover. This little barn here is wood. It is going to be soft cover as well as this pile here of various sacks of wheat and bales of hay. So that's it, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, now I will go ahead and I will look at the forces that we will be using tonight. Attacking tonight we have a platoon from the 4th Camerons using the 1940 setup from the Blitzkrieg 1940 handbook. So we start off we have a new lieutenant, Lieutenant Phil McCracken and his Piper and then we have his Platoon Sergeant, Sergeant Rob McDowell. We also have three sections of seven men each. Each section consists of a corporal with rifle, seven man rifle team, three man Bren team. And again, we have the Empty Boys AT rifle, for which I've taken one man out of both sections to crew the rifle. So I only have one seven man section left and then or one seven man rifle team left and two six man rifle teams and then of course the handy dandy two inch mortar now we'll go see what the germans are bringing defending tonight we have a platoon from the 57th german infantry division this is a second wave division from the 1940 handbook so we start out we have the platoon leader lieutenant hans kramer armed with pistol platoon sergeant Eric Franz, armed with submachine gun. We have three identical squads. Each squad is a junior leader sergeant with submachine gun, three-man MG34 team, and six-man rifle team. And we have the three-man five-centimeter 
mortar team. And that is it for the um, forces. So now we will go ahead and do all the rest of the stuff and get started with the game. All right, so Andre's here. Um, we're gonna roll for our first morale. But first I wanna show off these new dice that we got here in Tabletop CP, custom dice. And yes, they are as good as they look. Yep. Or they look as good as they look or... Something like that. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, <laughs> say uh, they're pretty sweet. He's yeah. not just saying that because they're his dice. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we're going to be using these on the channel. And also uh, patrons, the old guard level patrons will be getting some of these as well. As well as some other stuff. So if you're interested in uh, supporting the channel and getting some cool goodies, take a look at the uh, Patreon page. So first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to roll our force morale. Hey! Woohoo! They're awesome dice. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you can even see that on camera. I know the, the black and the white one probably, but the green one... Well, they're both ones, so we both start at eight. So yeah, I've briefed Andre. We know what we're doing. And, uh, <laughs> that's well, a, <laughs> we know that's a generous overstatement, but thank you, Travis. <laughs> we know what's supposed to be done, at least. And then, uh, so we'll do the patrol thing. The patrol phase is complete, so I did start uh, with all of mine in this this part here. I was hoping to get over here so I could make a beeline for the building, but it didn't work out that way. So I put all four of mine here. Andre had all four of his behind this building, and what we wound up was I wound up with one here, uh, one here, one here, and Andre's jump off points are in the woods, in the wheat field, and there's one right there. So we're going to decide what we want for support with our 14 support points and then we're going to do our plans and then we'll get started. Okay so support choices have been chosen now we will do the plan. So the British plan. I have 14 support points we will do. So I'm going to bring a 2 inch mortar, one Bren carrier, the Char B1 French tank as a reliable ally. I'm also going to bring the Piper as counts as drinks cabinet I'm going to bring the pregame barrage and a medic. So my objective is, well, it's going to be virtually impossible to complete the objective unless the turn never ends uh, because Andre can't bring in any of his support until turn two. So if someone rolls an early triple six or Andre gets enough uh, chain of command points early to end the turn early, I could be in big trouble. So my main thing I need to do is rush the board. So I'm going to use the char and the Bren carrier to just charge in. Uh, try to get to these jump off points as soon as I can. Uh, I'm going to set up a base of fire back here with a couple squads, uh, a couple two inch mortars, and a senior leader to um, lay down fire support. And the two inch mortars, what I'm going to try to do is uh, isolate some of his squads. So if he deploys like a squad over here or a couple squads next to each other, I can try to block one and then with the two inch mortar smoke and then pick on the other one. So two inch mortars, yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do is just um, isolate a squad or team or something that I can't if I can and try to take it out. And hopefully I remember I can to use the focus fire of the Bren to really single out teams in a squad. So uh, so that's the plan. Move up fast with my armor, lay down smoke, and try to pick off uh, teams and squads individually if I can, and hope that the turn doesn't end too quickly. Because if it does, then suddenly it's going to be an even fight, um, and it's just going to turn into a big static firefight at that point. Whoever gets the best rolls and the best uh, command dice will probably win. So yeah, that's it for the British. So now we'll let the German player Andre uh, do his plan. The German plan. Well, the board from my perspective, there's a whole lot of open space out there Travis has to cross. So what I'm looking at is 
I bought barbed wire with my uh, couple one point and that's gonna try and cut off the top edge of the uh, forest up there. My thought is if I can keep him from coming down that edge with his infantry and getting in the woods I can funnel him through the open and have a much better chance of tearing him up as he's coming in. Um, I would have loved to have had points for a minefield to mine the road but I don't. I went with the uh, Pack 36 a small tank and an infantry team as my other uh, support choices. So with the uh, um, Pack 36 and the uh, tank I'll be able to hopefully put a hurt on some of his vehicles if I can get them in quick enough. Uh, I'm assuming Travis will have some heavier stuff uh, backed up to try and support his infantry advance. I don't have a great plan for dealing with the barrage, but uh, he's got to come down here and I'm on defense, so it, uh, it may well be he's going to pretty much be over here before I can do anything, and uh, we'll see. So basically, uh, a wait and see. I've got plenty of light cover, uh, which makes hard cover if I've got a gun shield, and my points are close enough together that I can uh, easily link everybody up to share hits but uh, far enough apart to where Travis will have to work a little bit to get to them and they can support each other well so it's a you know very defensive thing and um, I've got lots of good line of sight I don't know if he'll go for that building or not uh, but uh, you know, um, it's really going to come down to how well he can use the smoke and if he takes the barrage, how well that works for him and how quickly I can get a die and end the turn. Well, here it comes. All right, plan's complete. So Andre has one static defense and it is a string of barbed wire right there. And now we will begin the game with the attackers. Baby. No triple six. Oh, double Ooh. six. <laughs> Double phase. Living on the edge. Sweet. So uh, two threes and a one. I don't know how readable these are in the camera. Hopefully not too bad. So uh, so anyway, two threes and one and a double phase. Sweet. So they brought in these. Uh, I was going to bring in some squads, but Andre was right. They got a double phase. Bring in the armor. So char B1 and brain carrier. Uh, ignore the scale difference, if you would. Next phase. Okay. Uh, one, 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 two. Roll pass. Yeah, I brought in uh, a squad with the two and the one, put them on Overwatch. And with the two ones, I brought both my two inch mortars in, and I dropped, tried to get smoke next to each other here, but one drifted. So. Well, you did get smoke next to each other. I did, just in the wrong area. <laughs> okay, not a triple six. Ooh, nice roll though, but uh, unfortunately, I don't need a nice roll right now. You need all fives or triple six, right? No, I need all ones. I mean, uh, all fives. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, man, that is kind of okay. tempting, but uh, I'll pass. Okay. Another double phase. And a four and a one. Still can't move the tanks. And a chain of command point. So I brought my uh, platoon sergeant, Rob McDowell, <laughs> in. Also the medic. He ordered the squad to move up. And then I fired the two two-inch smokes, and they landed right where I wanted, so pretty much blocking that jump off point off the blind of sight. And we will go into the next phase. There's another double phase. What the hell, man? And two threes. I uh, made two threes, moved both armor vehicles up full speed. Next phase. It's not a double phase this time. Three ones and a four. So the Bren carrier moved oh, up full speed uh, on with the three well, ones. We're tied on, uh, and with numbers. the four, I fired two more, two more uh, smokes here. So back to Andre. Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> Double phase, Andre. 
You can do something, you can do nothing twice. I can do twice as nothing? Twice as much of nothing. So you're, are you passing? Oh, I don't know. Let's, You've got targets out there now. Let's let him think it's about it. Out. He's passing on his first face. Ooh, look at that. That's a really good roll right there. That's one hell of a roll. Still no fives. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and pass it. No double phase. The whole point of this is just rolling fives. Yeah, you're supposed to be rolling fives, Andre. I just rolled two. Okay, okay. I guess I can start then. And then a four and a one. Now uh, with the one, I brought my AT rifle in. And with the four, I had this two inch mortar move up to make room for him. And then I put the AT rifle on Overwatch, and I'm not going to fire any more smoke. And I'm I would like to say, Andre. I said I wanted to congratulate uh, Monty on that awesome tactical advance oh. that's going on there. Well, I can't get any threes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, double phase. <laughs> one more Enjoy. six. Enjoy. Totally different game at that point. No. Hey! Five. A five! Woohoo! All right. My phase, I'm yep. assuming. I don't think we've ever had this many double phases in as few turns. That's been, yeah, I've, you've had two, I've had three. And I wound up with you've three twos. I've had four double phases. Well, I believe so. Okay. So you I got a back to back one. I did get three threes, though, and a two, so I can move my vehicles again. All right, so a lot of movement. Both vehicles moved up. This guy got like a 19 inch move. Tank got 15. And with the two, I brought in a squad here. With the other three, I brought in another squad here and put them on Overwatch. So back to you, Andre. Woohoo! <laughs> another double phase. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And three ones. It's like six double phases now. And a five. And a five. I pulled a five out of it. Awesome. Andre's up to three, five. Three chain of command dice. I'm at a full one now. And hey, I got, you can end uh, the turn. Yeah, I should. <laughs> and then uh, two ones and a two. So the Char B1 has boogied down the road. He's getting pretty close to that jump off. Right now. No five. <laughs> Next uh, phase. Oh. Yeah. Two more fives. No three, though. No three. Um, I'm not locked down yet. Well, I wouldn't get too excited because I can interrupt <laughs> and drive up to it. Maybe I just won't take my turn. That would... <laughs> <laughs> well, with the two, I'm actually going to move this squad. So that squad was able to make it into the bottom floor of the, of the building. So, German phase. Hey, a five. Well, I'm up to four. So Andre's just trying to build up his chain of command ice there. So I did get two threes. Well, two ones and two twos. <laughs> and a six. A great idea for you. <laughs> so I was able to make it up to capture that one. He's moved up. He's getting close as well. Andre needs his turn to end. I'm getting close. All right. Hopefully I don't get a double phase, Andre. So three, one, two, four, one. So that's pretty decent. All right, so the Bren made it. So I've captured both of these now. And the Char B1 has turned and is headed this direction. And Andre needs to do something rapidly. Hey. Double phase. Hey, two fives. And Look a double that. phase and a four. Woohoo, I can bring my senior leader in. So Andre is not going to bring anything in. But I'm going to use my chain of command ice interrupt. And I'm going to try to get to that, that jump off point with this tank. So I need a 13. This could be the shortest game of bolt action. I mean, <laughs> the shortest game of chain of command in the history of the world. No, not quite. So that was my chain of command dice. So you're going to, I'm assuming you're going to end the turn now. Uh, and you get another well, phase. Well, you moved up a ways, right? Yeah, yeah. Phase, eight yeah. inches. Eight inches. Yep, and then it'll be Andre's phase again. All right, so Andre did end the turn. So all the smoke went away. I lost all my overwatch. He did lose both of his jump off points, and he some force morale dropped to three. He's down to five already, and it's your phase. So that's not too bad. All right, so Germans, Germans have appeared. So we have what two squads, Pack 36, 
And he also brought a Panzer 38T from the road. And he's going to fire into the back of the char first. So, needing a 4 on 2D6, Andre. A 4 on 2D6. You can do it. <laughs> a 3. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so, you still have the pack 36. Yep. So, so you brought that in with a one, right? Uh, or a three. I'm trying to figure out what you I did. So I brought it in with a three. Okay, so he can fire and needing a four because his leader can focus the fire. So what are you shooting at? Um, the big boy or the Bren? I'll uh, shoot at the big boy. Okay. That's a hit. That's a hit. All right. All right. So it's. Five AP against seven. Yeah. One. I got four. <laughs> really, Travis? <laughs> hey, tabletop CP dice, man. Uh. Oh, you got them too. <laughs> <laughs> the white ones are better. So wow. Straight bounced it. And then he's going to use some uh, machine gun fire to try to drive these guys off now. So you got two machine guns, so you can pick which ones you want to do. You have a better chance against the brand for sure. Um, yeah, uh, fire both machine guns at the char, be one. So I got A5. <laughs> wow. Yep. Cutting a, little, cutting a little too close there. And A5, yeah. oh, two, okay. So I bounced them. He's not too worried about the machine guns, so back to the... Well, you were, I wasn't too worried until just about now. Um, <laughs> well, now this there. is the shortest game ever. <laughs> Double phase. Awesome. But no threes. <laughs> <laughs> a four and <coughs> two ones. So the um, platoon sergeant, first thing is gonna, he's going to have this Bren team focus fire onto this. Actually, I should fire onto your AT gun, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, so soft cover. <laughs> So all the shots, all these red shots are going on to the AT right, or can you even see them <laughs> from there? All right, so we're, since he's facing that way, I'll say no gun shield. Even though you're in front of it? Um, I'm behind it. No, you're not. All right, fine, I'll have this squad do it. <laughs> okay, because my gun shield's like that. Okay, then this Bren will do the shooting. He's definitely behind it. Whoa. Five hits. That all you got? Five out of six. So <laughs> five hits solely on the pack thirty-six. So let's see right there. Hey, I got your tank. You have a shock. Out of all that. Okay. So next we're gonna have this entire squad. So that was uh, two commands from him over to here, or from here. Either way, they're both the same distance. So. Uh, now the squad will fire 13 shots just into the cluster. Needing fives. One, two, three. So you can split them. Actually, up. yeah. Well, I'm targeting them, so, so it would be these those three. three. So one on the machine gun. Nothing. One on the rifle team. It's a shock. And a shock on the AT. So each, one shock on the AT gun, one shock on the rifle team. Next, the guys in the building are going to fire. They have one extra shot because that's the seven-man rifle team. So they are going to fire and target the AT gun. Two, four, six hits. Okay. So it looks like you can split them up pretty much everywhere. So at least one on Actu him. Well, they go on the lowest cover, right? That's right. But you do have to put at least one on him. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. Let me hold on. They hit oh, everybody. Pretty much, yeah. So I've got... I'm sure that, yeah, everyone's within four of the gun. So put one on the gun, and then just, I guess, spread the rest out. So it's a five is a pin, a six is a kill, cover, huh? Yeah, because yeah, you got the gun shield now. But... Yeah, okay, so you're gonna. Alright, so. I'll go like this. Alright, so two on this rifle team? Yep. Yeah. Alright. Oh. A dead and a shock. Uh, uh, the 
machine gun team? Or no, that's the AT gun. Oh, heh. <laughs> I did a good job not putting any on the rifle team, didn't I? Or I machine gun probably, team. I guess you probably should put one on there. Another so, shock. Point of shock. Yeah, you probably should have put one of those on there. Okay. So we'll roll for that in a minute. And then so this... the machine gun team. <laughs> Another dead. Nothing on the rifles. So these were, what were these? We'll figure it out. All right, so roll for the leader for this squad here. Nope. Leader on the other squad, no. So we rolled it. Uh, the kill was on the machine gun. So he lost a machine gun crewman on both, both machine guns. squads and then took some shock and I think it is now my next phase. Yeah, breath of a chance. Oh nice. So we got some threes, another chain of command point, and a four and a two. The first thing I'm gonna do, the four, I'm gonna activate uh, McDowell and he is going to have the AT rifle fire at the 38T. So it's going to be five, but we'll say it's uh, obscured, partially obscured since you're right on the edge of the woods. So seven. I need a seven. Oh, Jeez. it's a it's an extra hit. I get three more, three more strike dice. It is one of those nights. <laughs> it's definitely one of those nights. So I get two plus three more because I got a critical hit. I found a weak point. All right, so I get five strike dice because I found a weak point in armor. Uh, Andre's got four. Uh, so I got two. I get one. One. So roll a d6 for a one net hit. One net hit on a tank on a four. One shock. Move fast, flat out, removed. Lowest dice. So I guess you're, we, we hit a track. So you can't move flat out anymore. And you take a shock. Oh, so I don't move. No, it's, I think it just reduces your... Um, I'm like, uh, take <laughs> shock! Yeah! <laughs> With McDowell's last command, he's going to have him and the squad fire back into this cluster targeting the uh, this machine gun here. Actually targeting the... Yeah, we'll do that machine gun. So, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five hits. So does that mean I can put kits onto the gun? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Because that, so that was the mistake we were making was saying you couldn't put any hits on the gun? No, uh, we were saying that you had to put all the hits onto the people on the worst cover. It's so actually you can choose to do that. So if you want to put the hits, some hits on guys in hard cover, you can. But the way we were doing it is if there was guy in hard cover, guys not. We, we were saying they all had to go, go on, on the yeah. guys not. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that it reads actually you can choose to. Well why would that. you ever choose to put them on the guys in the soft cover? In the hard cover you mean? No, in the soft cover. The worst cover? Yeah. Uh, because if you have a gun or something dangerous in hard cover you could maybe do something to it. Sacrifice <laughs> or not do something to it. Or not. It's a risk. Or, well. It's a risk. I think we're talking backwards about this. Okay, so what did I say I had? <laughs> Five hits? Uh, I think it was one. Remember what it was, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was five. What does it do, five? <laughs> five hits. We'll split them up. <laughs> At least one each. Okay, so there's one each. There's an extra one there. And so I can, can I do it like that? Yep. Okay. So roll for the gun. The gun, the gun. So he takes another, another shock. shock. Yeah, I'm up to four is all. Okay, and the machine gun. Nothing. Rifle team. Point Nothing. Shock. Oh. Soft cover. Soft cover. Okay. All right. So that was McDowell's four, and I still have a two threes and a two. So the tank has moved up two d six. He got in contact with the jump off point, and I moved two d six on the fire machine gun at half effect at. Uh, just this squad. I got one hit. So machine gun, nothing. Okay, that was a three. So with the two threes, I'm actually going to do focus fire. I'm going to have both Brens, or, or we'll do it one at a time. So the first Bren's going to focus fire onto that machine gun. Eight and fives. Three hits. 
Need some good bread <coughs> guys here. So I don't split it? Nope. Two shock. So the other Bren will do the same thing. And he gets one hit. And another shock. And actually, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't have another. I had three, another two. So take that shock off. I have to actually fire the whole squad now. Instead. Just <laughs> one shock. <laughs> well, technically, I can't do the focus fire because on a two. Uh, two hits. <laughs> That's the dice gods paying me back. Okay. So split them up. Um. Okay, one on the, uh... I don't think I can see him because of the tank. Okay. So we'll just on these two. Alright. Machine gun. Nothing. Shock on the rifle. So you wound up with the same thing. A point of shock. In a different place. In a different place. And that's it for me. So you're... See if I get to do anything. Come on, triple six. Well, you can make a three. One, two, three, <laughs> four. All right, so the first thing he's going to do with the two and the one, make a three, and he's going to try to drive that brand off again. Come on, five. Got it. Double six. So it's a five or better? Yeah. I thought it was just a five. No, it's just a five or better. Your armor. You have to pass an armor save, basically, which is five plus. Yeah, justify that would be weird. <laughs> I thought it would. Well, it. <laughs> I thought it was a little too easy. Okay. Um, All right. We'll let him figure out what he wants to do next. Thirty-eight T has advanced one inch, and he's going to fire at the Bren. Even six. Woo! -hoo. He got it. Wow! I hit something. So I think you're five, right? Yeah. And I'm only a two. He got two. And three ones. Ah, oh, I got one. So, one net hit. That's probably not good. One net hit on a carrier immediately drive flat out towards cover. So, I guess cover's over here. Or here. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll probably not go towards flat out. So, I guess I have to roll for that, huh? I don't think I can go flat out through the woods, though, can I? Well, so, we'll so you go up. flat out till you get to the woods? So let's go right there and turn our rear end towards the tank. <laughs> All right, what else you got? So that was two threes, got a four left. You're going to bring... Oh, you can't bring it. I can. Down. Yeah. So it's uh, my face. But uh, yes, I was going to do that. That's right. I'm shutting down your jump off point. Come on, yep, triple yep, six. Yep. Not a double phase, Andre. Oh, well. Maybe next time. But I got two twos and a three. Drop uh, the, um, the four I'm going to have, the platoon sergeant activate tried to drop a smoke here drifted over there and he's gonna have both of these squads now fire into here see how much shock I can get then I'm gonna try and do a tank rush on him I would do it on the AT gun but I can't see it so this is one squad so one two three four five hits split them up So it'd be machine gun and, and rifle team. Oh, I can't put them there. No, I can't see through the tank. Okay. Otherwise, I would love to shoot at them. So nothing there. And a point of shock. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same with the other squad. Minus one shot. One, two, three. Three hits. Okay. Um, I'll go two on the machine gun. Point of shock. And one on the... Point of shock. All right, so now I'm going to do a tank shock. Okay, so uh, the rifle team has five. Machine gun team has three. I've come into contact with them by moving 1d6, a two. I made it. So he has to roll over a five for the rifle team. Using on 3d... 3d6? Yeah. <laughs> 3D threes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he did not roll over. So roll for the machine gun. You did roll over. So D six guys get crushed in the rifle team. Five guys. Only five. Five guys killed. So roll for your leader. It's him. See what happens to him. 
uh, he's lightly wounded. So roll a bad thing. Uh, probably a minus one. That would be my guess. Wounded. Yeah. And then he lost four riflemen. Crushed by the Char B1S. And the leader got his foot run over. <laughs> and wounded. And that is... Uh, so you're down. So these four. guys can move where two d six. Yeah, they can move uh, two d six. So four inches. Mm. All right. So these guys move two d six since they were able to get out of the way. They just moved to there, and they were able to move four because well, if you get hit by the tank, you can move four. <laughs> Woo -hoo. So there you go. So your phase, I believe, Andre. Is and that, is that all I had. Is that all? Is that all you got, Travis? That was the three for the tank. Yeah, that's it. I believe I'm losing a die here. Yeah, you're down to four, so you lose a command dice. Okay. <laughs> and a two and a one to work with. Eight. Yeah, so he's moved his tank up 1d6. He's going to fire, we'll say, partially obscure because I'm more than three quarters in the woods. So he needs a seven plus the one for the shock. Need an eight. Uh, two, I see. And a three, so that's a miss. That's all he can do. I need some dice to end this thing. Getting closer. We can end it any time. <laughs> <laughs> two, three, four. So Lieutenant Hans Kramer from off the battlefield has yelled to withdraw. So the Germans are withdrawing. So awkward left-handed handshake. And we'll come back and wrap it up. All right, so 51st Highland Division wins. Uh, Lieutenant Phil McCracken has uh, won a victory. So I'm pleased with that because I've won two of the first three. And my goal when looking at this campaign initially was to at least win one of them. So two is even better. I did not lose a single model. Um, I got down took the two and just rolled it up so there's just some lucky dice for sure by me and really bad dice by Andre um, yeah, that wasn't the whole story though um, I just didn't understand uh, vehicles um, I didn't think about vehicles being able to capture cat uh, jump off points and Actually, I totally didn't, because uh, my initial plan was to uh, have uh, uh, two minefields and three barbed wires, just to slow your advance down. But then I thought, no, I'd rather have uh, another uh, infantry uh, section rather than all that extra delaying action, because what do I care if he brings his armor up um, if he doesn't have his uh, infantry behind it? So. It was just me not realizing that the uh, armor could take jump off points that totally hosed the whole thing. Mm. And the only way I had a uh, prayer was if I had just a string of minefields. Well, yeah, even with a string of minefields, I don't know that I could have stopped you from doing what you did. Uh, it, you could have put a roadblock in. I could have went around it. Yeah. But, but um, the staying on the road did get me like at least 12 inches of extra movement. It did, but just making you go around the roadblock would have maybe slowed you down one turn, which was not enough. Uh, yeah. It, uh, um, yeah, so. It was a bad game for you. It, uh, well, it just, um, in this scenario, when you've got no way to stop armor vehicles till the second turn, um, right. it's either you've got... Uh, all roadblock well you did uh you could have put minefields in front i mean you only needed to hold one of these to win so you could have you know really fortified one as the kind of your last you know last ditch well, location that, that, well that was the problem was i didn't realize the vehicles could take jump off points oh yeah they can so I wasn't worried about it. I mean, I honestly wasn't worried about losing two jump off points and going down to five morale. That <laughs> um, really didn't bother me either. And I, I really think I would have been okay if I could have just made two shots. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that whiffing on that first shot when you needed a four was a game changer. And then whiffing with the uh, 
howitzer. Well, he sh was supposed yeah. to. I mean, both your vehicles were supposed to die on the spot. Yeah. And the odds were that. If not dead, they would have been highly, uh... And I would have been fine. I was fine. I was resigned to them dying. They did their job. They got the two. I'm like, fine. I can finish you off. It's, I mean, you're going to have to deploy here. The only other thing you could have done was deploy back into the woods. That's what I would have done. It made me come, get come in and get you. Yep. And then that would have gotten bloody. Yep. And it would have probably taken until 2 a.m. <laughs> probably, but, uh... But yeah. you, were, you were thinking I was going to bring an infantry wave behind armor. And sweep the woods, huh? That was, yeah, that's why I did bring the one barbed wire, was to keep you from, you know, rolling up my uh, left flank there. Because yeah. if you could have, because you got that further jump off point up there. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you made a run for it, and I thought, okay, if you bring, uh, you know, two armored vehicles and one or two sections up that flank, if you get your infantry into this wood, I'm toast. That uh, would have been bloody. So Maybe that's why I put bloody. the barbed wire up there, and I thought, I got this. <laughs> um, well, that my plan from the beginning was I never planned on, well, I, I thought if the condition was right, I might advance. But my whole thing, I was going to make a firing line and just wait for you to deploy. Send my armor up. I thought for sure that would make you deploy something. <laughs> and, then could, and then I was going to drop two inch smoke in front of like various teams and focus fire onto yeah. and pick off teams individually. But then I'm like, okay, I'm up to one. I got two. There's no Germans. And it was only, I mean, I, I got with what, three inches of being within shutting down this by being within four inches of yeah. it. And if I would have did that, you would have been... Well, screwed. I, um, you mean you could have brought him in? I'd have had, well, except to do that, I would have had to end the turn, and he'd be the only unit I could have on the board. Yep. <laughs> but if you kill them, then you could start deploying from it again. No, I couldn't. As long as I wasn't within four. You, turn already ended. I have to end the turn to bring him in. He can't come in until turn two. Right. By the time you end the turn with control of it, they go away. No, it's only if you're touching it. If you're only within four, you shut it down. Well, if then this one should still be in over there. No, I, I came into contact with both. Yeah, but you weren't touching it when the turn. You don't have to be touching it when the turn. You have to touch it, and never, and after that, you have to touch it again to reclaim it. Right. Once I touch it, it's mine forever until you touch it again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So once you got over and, oh, well, okay, if I killed you while you were still four inches away before you touched it, Yes. I understand now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have to stay on it till the turn ends. So I just have to get it and drive off and yep. you have to go back. So but you could have actually drove up. Well, anyway, it's all academic at this point. <laughs> driven up and done what? Well, I was thinking if but I had already touched it. You could have driven up and touched it again, but when the turn ended it would have went away. Well, it, so to moved. bring him in, the turn had to end. So yeah. the two that you touched um you were screwed. They literally were gone no matter what, but yep. that really wasn't an issue for me. This is the jump off point I wanted. Yeah, you, you could have made a last stand here. You could have put some bar or minefields, you know, and really dug in around this one. So yeah, if I hadn't have taken so you, that other section, so and, you brought a fourth section as yeah. your extra support, and you never even brought in your original three. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it uh, it went downhill really fast. Yeah, it was oh, all those double, double phases. phases. <laughs> I was getting... Yeah, I think I was halfway down the board with all my tanks before you even got, like, through four, four, four phases. Well, and I couldn't roll... I was not rolling uh, as many fives uh, as average uh, would have dictated either. Well, you say that it's... You know, you made mistakes, but... You can't deny that your dice were crap, and mine were on fire, man. Especially that AT rifle hit with a double oh, six. And just... Well, yeah, I think I said it's going to be one of those nights more than once. Yeah, and it definitely... Um, but... Uh, it's definitely one of those nights. No, I th I think if I'd have... Uh, you know, if we replayed this again right now, mm -hmm. I could have uh, had those same die rolls and been reasonably okay, um, you know, using a fortified positions um because you know well you know what it's like trying to dig somebody out when they're really fortified yeah it's it's impossible 
That's why my, my whole plan also hinged on that turn not ending until I got down here. If you would have rolled a triple six or I did when I was back here, oh, the whole game, been toast. I probably would not have won. No. The only way I won is by doing exactly what happened and you know, getting lucky with the rolls and just sweeping around. So No, I really didn't see you winning this until I uh, missed the butt shot. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. That was horrible. So, <laughs> anyway, so it's uh, the end of June 4th. June 5th will be the next battle and the uh, start of Operation Fall Rot, the second phase of the conquest of France. And starting the next game, the Germans will be on the offensive and it'll be a more traditional uh, mini ladder type, ca type campaign. But the Germans are going to have two less turns to do it in now because I won two of the three games. No so you pretty much, you're pretty much going to have to win every single game in a row to get a victory. How hard could it be? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you roll like I did, not hard. So Anyway, that's it for this one. So uh, we'll be back uh, next week for the next installment.